Hello, um, today we're going to be look, looking at a uh, digital um, landscape here, a digital scene that we're going to create. And this is the one that I've created and we're going to work uh, from the end and then kind of go to the beginning and, and kind of show you how this uh, gets done from start to finish. So i uh, just kind of show you it a couple times. Um, there's some randomness that happens uh, when it's built. So the buildings are randomly built. The trees are random, the birds are random, the clouds are actually random. Um, they're in a location um, to start with, but if you notice their shape, um, they change every time. Um, the waves are randomized, um, but um, everything here is built in about 150 lines of code. Um, it uses a lot of for loops. Um, so it, uh, it uh, and functions. So that's really the purpose of this unit is to create abstraction and then to also utilize uh, looping structures and um, so that's what this has done. Um, this would be a great start um, to get you going and then uh, when you kind of have confidence in designing this then creating your own shouldn't be that uh, much of a challenge once you've gone through this process. Um, hopefully the underwater scene, you learned a lot of skills there. Um, I felt that the underwater scene uh, gave you a lot of code that if you didn't take the time to look through it, um, you could just kind of skip over it and just kind of do the activity without, um, without really understanding what's going on. So hopefully this will be another opportunity for you to kind of look and understand um, as you go through this. So. Anyway, um, that's where we're going to start, and that's where we're going to go uh, with this particular project. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. Um, so I'm going to go into my projects and go into App Lab. And I usually start with the low-hanging fruit. Um, when you design, I like to have a, a sheet of uh, scrap paper or just blank you know, printer paper. Um, or if you have graph paper, that's even good to have nearby because then you can draw out uh, with your grid lines um, what you want things to be. Um, but I'd like to do a lot of my planning on paper um, and then transfer it um, to actual code once I've thought through the math, um, especially when you're using for loops and you're creating randomness. Um, I like to make one item and then figure out, okay, where can I randomize this and then how would I um, incorporate those as variables and then how do I put those variables in um, these functions as parameters. So that's kind of the process that I work through and that's what I'm going to show you today as we go through this. So I don't know how many parts this will be. Hopefully it'll, it'll take less than an hour um, is kind of my goal. So low hanging fruit uh, with turtle is really just kind of creating a background. So um, I always like to use the pin up command. Um, at the beginning of all of my functions, just so I know that when I move um, to a location to put something in place, um, it's not going to draw a line from where my turtle started to where I move it to. Um, and then I'm going to move the turtle to the midpoint, which is, oh, let's see, I think it's 320 wide. Yeah, so around 160 for the X, and then I think it's 450 tall, so it would be 225 for the Y to move it basically right in this area. Uh, so I'm going to move there. I'm going to do a dot with a radius of a thousand. So it's going to be just a huge dot. Now I could have probably just done one with a radius of, you know, four or five hundred, but a thousand is good. Um, and if I run it, it makes it black because that's my default color. So I'm going to use uh, my pin RGB. Um, I like pin RGB because I can actually customize the color that I want. You could just do pin color and do something like light blue um, and that works. But I'm a fan of going to color picker. So if you uh, Google search color picker, you can actually run this over um, and you can get whatever color blue you want. Um, and if you want to randomize it, which I'm going to kind of show you that process, you can actually do different colors of blue and different hues. Um, you know, different 
different shades of blue. So I'm going to go with kind of a sky blue color here, kind of a light pale blue. And here it gives me my RGB value, gives you your hex value if you want that. Um, but I'm going to go with the RGB value right here. I'm just going to copy that with Control C. I'm just going to highlight right in here, Control V. And now when I run it, I've got my pale blue background. Um, so that is the background. So once I write the code, I've tested it, I'm going to put it into a function. And this one's going to be called draw background. And then I'm just going to move those right in here. Um, I typically like to tab it in one spot, so that way we're good. And now my background is done. Um, to call that function, I just call draw background. Open close parenthesis with a semicolon, and then now it runs perfectly. So step one is done. Um, let's do clouds. Um, clouds, I think, uh, or do we want to do birds? Uh, let's do birds. Birds are pretty easy. Um, birds are just some arcs. We, uh, we're essentially going to do an arc and then another arc. So almost looks like a little M with our arcs. So let's see, how am I going to draw a bird? So I'm just going to test a little draw drawing right here and see if it works. I'm going to turn to an angle and let's turn to 45. So my arrow is going to be, or my turtle is going to be pointing kind of up that direction. And then let's do an arc to the right. Um, let's move that after our turn two. And let's do an arc radius of five and let's see what 90 degrees gets us. Oh, I guess it would help if we change the color. So let's do a pin RGB. So it did it, but it's in the same blue color as the background, so we don't see it. Um, so a couple things. I'm going to, again, do a pin up while I do a turn to, and I'm going to do a pin down right before I want to do my arc right. Um, now, oh, I've got to change this. I'm going to do this as black. So zero, zero, zero. And you can see it, it's just barely right there, and you're like, well, how do you know it's there? Um, well, let's do this. Let's put a pin up, and let's do a move to, and let's move this out of the way. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to move it to zero, zero. So we can see what we drew. And there we go. So just a little bit of a curl there. Um, that looks fine. And then let's just do another one. Let's do, so where we're at, let's do another turn two. So if you think about it, see our turtle is pointing down in this way. We're going to turn him back up. Um, so we're going to do this. And then we're just going to do another arc right after that. So there we go. That's pretty simple. There's a little bird. That looks great. Um, actually, if you wanted to make it a bigger bird, You'd have to turn them yellow. Just kidding. Oh, that's see, that's pretty good too. So you could actually. Um, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to. Um, let's see if three. What that looks like. I might make this a random number. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that a random number um, between three and ten. Um, so when I put birds on there, so it's a little different than what I showed you at the beginning. Uh, my birds were all I think five for these arc length. Uh, values, but I think I want to make it so that it's a uh, random bird size. So we're going to do that. Um, so right here, and my pen up, so I'm going to delete this. So this right here draws a bird, um, and that's really all we need to do um, to draw a bird. We're going to now create a function. We're going to call it draw bird. And again, we're going to cut that out of there. Paste it in there. I use my tab to tab those all over. And if I call draw bird, should draw bird. There we go. Um, this move to command, um, you can delete it because we don't need it anymore. However, the turtle is going to remain right there, so it kind of blocks that. Um, one thing that you could do at the end of all of your stuff is you could do a hide. Um, but again, sometimes you want to see the orientation of the turtle, um, but that hides the turtle there at the end. 
Um, if you leave it there, that's fine. You can just comment it out if you want to see where your turtle is um, at any point. Okay, so we have a bird. Let's make lots of birds um, in the air. So essentially, we're going to leave this command, this command, this command, and this command. So these really all stay the same. It's about the move to that we didn't put in here. So it's just keeping it at this location. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put a move to command here and I'm going to put bird X and bird Y. And now it's saying it doesn't know what bird X and bird Y are. So this is where we can start creating some randomness. So I'm going to say bird X is a random number between, I'm going to say 0 and around 315. Okay, so between 0, you could do 0 and 320, but if you did 320, you're not going to see your bird because um, it's going to start it off the screen. So I'd say between 0 and 315, and then I'm going to do the same thing but this time with bird Y, and that's going to be between zero, maybe between five, so I'll kind of go up here, five, and I want my birds to be in the top part of my screen, so I'm going to maybe do 150, so between five and 150. And now when I run it, there it is, I'm going to get rid of this so we can actually see, there's the bird, bird, so now we get our bird jumping around. Perfect. That's exactly what I want with my bird. Now, what if you want to randomize the size of the bird? So let's put another variable for size and make this a random number between, we said, 3 and 10. And now when we do our arcs, we can do those for a size. And now when we run this, you can see that we have different size birds. Cool. One thing that I'm going to change here. I'm going to move this above these because I actually want to say this x value is going to be 320 minus 2 times the size of the bird. And if you think about what that does is that it will if the bird is 10 it's really going to be an arc length like it's going to be a 10 and then a 10 for the radius or maybe that's radius. So this might be bird this might be 4 times the size. Essentially what I want to do is make it so that the bird doesn't ever go off the screen. Um, so this should ensure that the bird that I get um, doesn't go over there. So what I'm trying to do now is actually see if I can get it, how close it will be to that edge. Why am I doing that? Why not just put the size as 10, or I'm sorry. Uh, let's do bird x as, so if the size is 10, so we're going to put in an actual value of 10, and then if I do this, 320 minus 40 would be 280. So I'm going to comment that and comment that, and there we go. So that's too much. So let's do, um, let's do 300 here. Let's try that. So that's a little bit off, um, so let's do 290. Yeah, there we go, 290. So essentially, instead of four times the size, let's do three times the size, because three times 10 is 30, and that, um, that would make that 290. So I think that will work, um, so that now, whatever the random size is, it will create a bird. Yeah, this is great. Cool, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, next video. Uh, we're going to look at creating multiple birds. So we're going to use a for loop to create like 20, 25 birds on our screen rather than typing in draw bird. I mean, we could do this. And then when we run it, 
and draws all our birds. But we don't want to do that. We want to do it easier. 